Okay, uh, hi everyone. Um, Dave here. I thought I'd do a series of, I think it's going to be like three videos, uh, little short ones, hopefully, on um, how to overcome a problem. Um, and it's not to do with software and it's not to do with um, electronics or anything like that. This is, this is a different problem. So what I've got here is um, <clears throat> my mechanical arrangement for the drop art project. Um, so it's what I've built. This facilitates the actual dropping of the water. So what we've got here is a plastic acrylic tube, about 30 mil or something like that, open to the air in retort stand. And then I 3D printed a cap to fit on the end because it was open-ended. Uh, and then into the bottom of that cap is screwed some standard quarter-inch pipe fittings. They couple to the uh, valve which is inside this little plastic box. So that's all this in the block, plastic box is the valve, which actually you know, lets the water through when it's open. On the bottom is what's called a, it's a um, hose tail. I think it's called a hose tail, barbed hose tail. It's a little thing that screws in and you'd normally fit a plastic pipe to it. Just a convenient thing to drop water out of. Um, the, so the valve is wired to a connector here, which is where it gets its power to open and close the valve. So that's that's all good. I so say what normally happens is you would fill this this vessel with with water or whatever you're choosing to drop with water or milk or whatever, and then the, um, s the control system opens the valve and water drops out the bottom or liquid drops out the bottom. So brilliant. Um, unfortunately, there's a problem uh, and even a a, a, a quick tertiary glance this and a half a second of thought reveals what the problem is going to be. What we're trying to do at the bottom here is we're trying to produce drops of the same size, same size and you know basically consistent. So if we fill this with water to the top, top-ish, then we'll have a certain head of water on top of the valve which is governed by this the, the pressure, well atmospheric pressure plus the, the head of water which is equal to the density of the water times the height times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's, a, that's the pressure. Now as we then do our dropping and are trying to take photographs of all this business and trying to collide our drops, which is hard enough at the best of times, the water level is going to drop. And as the water level drops, the pressure drops and then the drop size changes. And then the whole dynamic of the situation changes and it will be very difficult to maintain consistent collisions if if a drop size is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So how, how are we going to get around that problem? Well, there's, there's two ways. And the first way is um, not the way we're going to do it, but you could do it. You could do it this way. You could have a sensor on the side of this tube and, this, and you could measure this water level and feed that into the PIC microprocessor, into the control system, work out what the pressure is at the valve and how it's changing and then subsequently change the drop size to compensate. So as the water level drops you could open the valve for longer to produce a bigger drop because there's less pressure. Could do it that way, it would be a pain. I mean it would be a pain, um, but it could be done. Uh, the other way of doing it is to use some very simple physics which is amazing and is I think as interesting as the rest of the project put together. Um, and I'd never come across it before I did this. So uh, in the next little video, I'll explain how that, what that physics is and how we can apply it to this project, this problem. Okay, so um, hang on, I'll stop this video and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, as promised, I am now back. Right, um, what have I done? Okay, well, I've replaced my hardware for the drop art project with this thing, this lash up. But it's easier to demonstrate what I'm wittering on about with this. So this is a half litre plastic drinks bottle. Um, and it's full of water. Well, it's full of water up to here. Um, and it's got an airtight cap, not surprisingly. Um, wouldn't, be more very good as a, wouldn't be much use as a water bottle if it didn't have an airtight water type cap, which it has. And then I drilled a hole in the top of the cap and I fitted this rubber, it's a rubber bung, you can just about see it there, sort of orangey rubber bung, sort of used in school labs and whatnot. That's also airtight, pretty airtight-ish, <coughs> excuse me. 
and then the rubber bung's got a hole in the middle through the middle like they often do for fitting glassware and whatnot but what i've actually put through the middle um if i can find it is uh a plastic disposable pipette um which has got a hole in the end obviously because it wouldn't be much use as a pipette if it didn't have a hole in at least one end uh, and then at the other end it would have been airtight but i've i've nipped the end off so it's now basically a tube because i just i needed a tube so then what i've done is i've shoved that up inside the pipette inside the bung so we've got a vessel full of water with a bung and it was all airtight and watertight and then there's a plastic tube that runs inside the um inside the liquid <coughs> and then what else have i done and i've drilled a couple of holes in the side uh sorry ava my daughter i'll buy you another drinks bottle i had to so um, there's two holes ignore the lower one for the moment that will be obvious in the next video why we need that the, there's an the upper one is about here we can see this black tape over it obviously because otherwise the water would run out um, and the tube in the inside the bottle is coming to just below uh, a, a quarter of an inch half an inch below the level of this this hole okay so what's all this about well let's let's have a look at the just let's have a look at the pressures in this bottle before we go in any further so we've got an air gap at the top uh, this pipette is open to the air and it's also open to the water so not surprising when i filled the water bottle up with water the pipette tube filled with water up to the same level so the water level here is in the in the in the in the drinks bottle is also the same level as it, as is in the pipette inside not surprisingly because it's open to the air and it's open to the water so it just filled up pretty obviously so so this is the pressure so the pressure in here in this air gap is is atmospheric because this is no, nothing's happening here and this is open to the air so this is atmospheric pressure in this void and this is the let's have a look at the pressure at the bottom of the tube at the bottom of the pipette right i've written this down on a bit of paper it's a little formula it's nothing complicated there it is so the pressure at the bottom of the pipette is equal to atmospheric pressure at the top plus the pressure due to this height or head of water and the pressure due to the head of water is the density of water times acceleration due to gravity which is what about 10 9.8 or whatever it is times the height so whatever that distance is that's the component due to the water and that's the component due to the atmospheric pressure which is already in. so the two added together is the pressure at the bottom of the pipette okay great okay so okay so now what i'm going to do is um so what do i want to do now well i was gonna what we're going to do now is we're going to open this hole and uh find out what happens uh but um this whole thing is called a marriott siphon um dreamt up by a 17th century french physicist and that's what well, it will be a marriott siphon in the moment it's not doing much siphoning at the moment but it will be a marriott siphon okay so um yeah, I'll be back in a second uh, when I've, uh, and then I'll open the hole. Okay, right, back again. So, so Marriott siphon. Right, this is open the hole. So I'm a bit cack handed. Um, so I don't know the hole. Okay, excellent. What happened? That is bizarre. So I've opened the hole, there's a hole, ignore the occasional drip, there's obviously a small air leak somewhere, you know, it's a lash up, like I say. So I've opened the hole, I mean, there's a hole, there's a, I've pulled the tape back and there's a hole here, I can stick my pencil in it. There you go. But, there's now, so the water, some water ran out and then it stopped. So what, what's going on? How did, what's happening? Well, the first thing I have observed is that the, the water in the in in the tube inside this bottle is evacuated. I there's now the water level dropped in the interior tube, and it's now I know it's difficult to see, but it's the water level sitting here in the inside tube. It's completely level with the hole that I made on in the outside. So the water level dropped, and it's now level with that hole, and no more water coming out. So let's let's have a look at the let's have a look at the pressures in the bottle. Right. 
Now what's happened is that the pressure in this up here, the pressure in this, in this air gap has fallen and it's fallen by atmospheric pressure minus the pressure due to the head of water. So there's actually a slight, there's negative pressure now with respect to atmospheric pressure in this void. The tube is now filled with air to the level of the hole. So why is there no water coming out? Well, this tube is open to the atmosphere. The top of this tube is open to the atmosphere. And we've got air down here, level with the hole. So if we've got air level with the hole, the pressure at the bottom of this tube, or the pressure level with the hole, is atmospheric. It must be atmospheric because the tube's open to the atmosphere. So it can be nothing else but atmospheric pressure. Now the pressure out here, where I'm sitting and where this pencil is, and where this hole is, is also atmospheric. So we've got atmospheric pressure on the inside of the hole, by definition, because that's it is, you can see that from the tube inside. And we've got atmospheric on the outside of the hole. So there's no pressure difference across the hole. And that's why there's no water running out. Water only runs out of something if the pressure one side of the thing is greater than the pressure on the other side of the thing. The thing in this case being the hole. There's no pressure differential across this hole and therefore no water runs out of it and it sits there in equilibrium. So how does this help us fix the problem? Okay, well I'll come back for the third bit of the video and explain how it does. Okay, back in a bit. Okay, as promised, back for the third bit of the video. So in the third bit of the video, what we're going to do, so what I've done is I've covered this hole, nothing changed, obviously nothing happened because there was no water running out of it anyway. But now what we're going to do is we're going to open the lower hole. Now the lower hole is obviously lower than the bottom of the interior siphon tube, Marriott siphon tube. So if I open the lower hole, sorry I've got my hand in the way, but okay, now we've got water running out. Water's running out of the, hole, the lower hole and we've got air bubbles popping out of this siphon tube. And that will carry on so it's just dripping out, running out. Now I'm just going to cover the hole because it's going to be a bit difficult to explain what's going on here with water running everywhere. Now, now hang on. This is where this is the interesting bit. This is the this is the the crux of it all. Hang on, let's just put this here just so I can get some drops coming out. So there's still air in the siphon tube. There's still air to the very bottom of this interior tube. So there's atmospheric pressure at the bottom of that tube. We've got atmospheric pressure on the outside of the lower hole. So what's the pressure on the inside of the lower hole? The pressure on the inside of that hole is only due to the head of water between the bottom of the siphon and the hole. It must be, because there's atmospheric pressure, fixed atmospheric pressure at the bottom of the siphon tube. There's fixed atmospheric pressure out here. So the only pressure on the inside of this lower hole is, is this little bit of the formula here, where H is the, diff is the height difference between the bottom of the siphon and the hole. Now that's critical, because that means that as this, as this water level falls in this bottle, it makes no difference to the pressure, to the amount of water coming out of this lower hole. The, the pressure coming out of the, as long as the water level in the bottle stays above, the, stays higher, the, Providing the water level in the bottle stays above the bottom of the siphon tube, the pressure on this lower hole on the inside will always be only dependent on the head of water between the bottom of the siphon and the hole. So that means as if we if we now make if we now return to the, the to the project, if I use a similar arrangement on here and, and, and close this off and put a put a siphon tube in the middle of here, like I've done with this test bottle. As we drop water, 
out of here, the pressure on the valve will only be dependent on the difference in height between the bottom of the siphon and where it exits the bottom of this tube. So as long as we keep the water topped up in here and don't let it fall below the bottom of the siphon, we'll always get a consistent drop size for any given time the valve is open. Problem solved. No electronics, no sensors, nothing fancy, just a Marriott siphon. That is brilliant. And that solves a massive problem. And I'm really pleased with that. I hope all that made sense. I know it's probably a bit garbled and a bit rubbish. But um, we'll look it up. It's on the internet. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not, I, you know this has been round since the 17th century. It's just, it's new to me. Anyway, so uh, there we go. Um, pressure problem solved using a Marriott siphon. Thank you very much.